All right, everybody. We are back at it again. If you remember from the last video on the test uh, footage, I had a leak. And I, I remember seeing water coming from right here in this corner right here. When I pull water up in here, you can see where the leak is. We'll go ahead and work on our new gearing. Thanks to you all. Um, and I tell you that um, everybody on YouTube, man, y'all just helped out a lot as far as figuring out uh, you know, one of my problems. And as you can see, I had this sucker geared way too low. 11 tooth sprocket going to a 33 tooth um, sprocket on, on the pump right here, which is a 3 to 1 ratio. And I wasn't thinking, I was just breaking everything down to ABC123 basics and all I knew was that I needed something right here with the chain going to something right here. I didn't take into account the gearing ratios. I didn't think it was going to play that big of a part. Upgrade it to a 40 chain. And we're going to have a 12 tooth on the shaft and a 22 tooth on the um, engine. I don't believe I came up with it. Someone suggested it to me. Um, someone else suggested, I mean, reminded me that. Uh, this little motor right here, this little teacup motor, might not have enough horsepower to, to push that. But, like I said, there's only one way to find out, and that's what we're about to do. I can't take this off without taking this off. And this doesn't thread on, it's just glass on there. So what I do is turn the motor on, turn the throttle up, and let it rotate. And take a piece of sandpaper, or I wish I had a file, I could just hold up right here and sand this bad boy down so I can slide this sprocket off. Here's my little model that I made. Yeah. yeah so I guess I got me a ghetto lathe. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Take this cap off too while I'm at it. <laughs> you see how that worked? Now it's time to take this bad boy off and put on our own um, 12 tooth. Much better, YouTube. I had to take off all this in order to take off this freaking collar right here. A couple people, you know, brought this to my attention. This, this bad boy is stalling, but hopefully. As long as nothing gets stuck up in the um, housing, up in the pump housing, it shouldn't stall out. I'm assuming that it should have enough horsepower to idle through that water. Dig managed to put on the 22 tooth uh, sprocket right here and the 12 tooth sprocket right here. We got our drain plug hole right here. Now what I'm about to do is just go ahead and sand this bad boy down. That the gasket that came with the drain plug have a smooth surface to um, mount. I really didn't trust just the gasket alone, so that's why I put a, a bead of JB Well. Just like that. Finally got them installed. Yeah, I ran into a couple problems, but. Nothing, a little bit of uh, American ingenuity can't fix. Yeah, we go taking them off. Just like that. We're about to redo this um, throttle. I had it wrapped around it with a zip tie, so I'm going to stiffen things up a little bit. For some reason, I always keep spare pieces. I don't know where this comes from. I believe it might have came off of a motorcycle. I never throw away spare pieces because I always come back and need them or I can gut them up and use them for something else. So I put some carriage bolts to the bottom of this. I'm going to mount this on top like so. Finally got done with all of the touch-ups that we had listed from the previous uh, float test. I went from one extreme to the other. It was a three to one. Now I'm at a 1 to 1.8. So, as far as pen and paper go, it's spinning uh, five times faster. Well, the shaft is. The pump is spinning five times faster than last time. 
that it's not going to increase my speed by five because you have to take into account water resistance um, and then how a, how a couple guys informed me about a uh, cavitation which is caused by this big void hole it's basically I have your intake right here where the shaft comes in this right here it has about a maybe a two inch two to three inch hole that's around the shaft you need to make that hole a little bit smaller to prevent cavitation which is causing drag what have you I started up early and I noticed the engine rocking a whole lot more so before I took it out on the test I'm gonna figure out a way to um, secure this bad boy and for those of you who recommended the direct driveway um, if I would have thought about the jet ski or the PWC pump whatever prior to the design phase of the boat I would have definitely done that but the problem is the bottom of the engine the base plate to the center of this shaft right here is a certain distance let's say four inches and the bottom of this to this shaft is about three inches so it's like a one inch difference between this shaft and that shaft so the only way to do it to make a direct drive is to <laughs> cut a hole in the bottom of the boat and kind of sink the, uh, the motor which uh, I just take my chances and do it like this and if it breaks in I'll then we'll have to redesign something I'm thinking as far as stabilizing this motor I'm gonna use these holes right here and at the same time it's gonna act as a uh, chain guard you know maybe a piece of metal coming from right here to right here angling down and prevent it from you know rocking back and forth on the previous setup was what a three to one and when I went back here to the pump put my hand back here and it felt like somebody was blowing on your hand you know and <laughs> the way it is now well <laughs> you're gonna see Just in case, you know, I went on ahead and threw this little piece of uh, plywood in right here with all the little necessary cutouts, what have you. So, um, take this bad boy out for the second time. As of right now, she's leak free. Well, unless these uh, drain plugs right here decide to uh, give us some jibber jabber, but other than that, she's all ready to go. I'm going to need help with this. I don't know what's the proper way to uh, tension these. Now search and search, but I haven't ran across anything. One more time for the road, we're gonna go ahead and turn over again. Thanks for hanging in there once again. And I'll catch you all on the uh, next test. And as always, thanks for watching.